Welcome to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. In this podcast, we discuss mystical works of literature and how they relate to recovery. We hope you enjoy today's podcast episode. Hello, this is Buddy C. Welcome to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. Today, we have Amy, Marla, and me. Should be a good conversation about where is Tao? We're still, we're nearing, not quite the end yet, of Chauncey's book. Uh, Chauncey was a student of Lao Tzu, who wrote the Tao, who's credited for writing the Tao Te Ching. And he took, uh, Chauncey took more of a story, comedic, kind of a comedy approach to some of this. Um, A lot more than Lao Tzu did. Lao Tzu was very, seemed to be pretty serious. But uh, Chauncey seems to have a little bit of a little bit of comedy to some of his stories, and he he tells it in story form rather than uh, in more of a prophetic form. Like I don't know what the anyone know what those term those literary terms are, but I I don't know. Don't forget about our where's Dennis. Don't forget about our nightly 9 p.m. Eastern AA online meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous. You can get there by going to zoomaameetings.com. goes directly to the link. Good to have you, Dennis. Just come when you can. Do you need a copy of the... No, I got it. Got it? Okay. I was just making announcements, and then we'll start talking. Where is Dow? That's yes, zoomaameetings.com. Amy, that's here, she chairs on Friday night or on Sunday nights. I chair on Friday nights. So we'd like if you come either one of those nights or you see us in the meeting, just say hello. We'd love to meet you. Several people have mentioned that they came from the podcast. So I've been excited to meet folks when they come. Where is Dow? Marla, you want to read for us? Are you good with that? Sure. <laughs> Why don't we? I was wondering if you feel famous when people come up to you and go, "Hey, oh, I hear you on your podcast." <laughs> like, <laughs> if you feel famous, anyways. Um, uh, well, not really. I, yeah, I'm just kidding with you. I was quoted. I've been quoted. Uh, I used to do a radio program for real estate years ago for two years on Atlanta yeah, radio. That's how you got all the gear. Of state. And I had someone quote me on real estate one time and didn't know it was me. I thought that that was pretty. I never mentioned it was me. You know, that was at the bank, actually. Like, well, the guy on the radio said, you know, (laughs) nothing. Yeah, he's probably right. You know, and I just went on. How did they not know that it was you? Your voice is very distinct. You're in Atlanta. Well, that's true. That's true. And I was and, and the voice over the radio versus live. You know, I'm, I'm sure it's a little different, you know, so. But, um, yeah, Marla, read, uh, I guess just read the whole thing and then we'll come back maybe, I guess. All right. Where is Dow? Again, I'll butcher the names. Uh, Master Tung Kuo asked Chang, show me where the Dao is found. Chuang Tzu replied, there is nowhere it is not to be found. The former insisted, show me at least some definite place where Tao is found. It is in the ant, said Chong. Is it in some lesser being? Is it in the weeds? Can you go further down the scale of things? Is it in this piece of tile? Further? Is it in this turd? I'm sorry. It is in this turd. At this, Tung Kuo had nothing more to say, but Chong continued. None of your questions are to the point. They are like the questions of inspectors in the market, testing the weight of pigs by prodding them in their thinnest parts. Why look for Tao by going down the scale of being as if that which we call least had less of Tao? Tao is great in all things, complete in all, universal in all, whole in all. These three aspects are distinct, but the reality is one. Therefore, come with me to the palace of nowhere, where all the many things are one. 
There at last we might speak of what has no limitation and no end. Come with me to the land of non-doing. What shall we there say that Tao? Is simplicity, stillness, indifference, purity, harmony, and ease? All these names leave me indifferent for the di their distinctions have disappeared. My will is aimless there. If it is nowhere, how should I be aware of it? If it goes and returns, I know not where it has been resting. If it wanders here, then there, I know not where it will end. The mind remains undetermined in the great void. Here, the highest knowledge is unbounded. That which gives things their thusness cannot be delimited by things. So when we speak of limits, we remain confined to limited things. The limit of the unlimited is called fullness. The limitness, the limitless of the limited is called emptiness. Tao is the source of both, but it is itself neither fullness nor emptiness. Tao produces both renewal and decay, but is neither renewal or decay. It causes being and non-being, but is neither being nor non-being. Tao assembles and it destroys, but it, it is neither the totality nor the void. Thank you, Marla. Comments? Um, it reminds me of the very first verse of the Tao by Lao Tzu. What, it, what the Tao is and isn't. We can look at that. I have a new computer, so all of my bookmarks are gone. There it is. Which version do you guys like? Let's see. Let's go with your favorite, Amy. Of the first verse? Yeah, Ron, Ron Hogan. Oh, the one who, yeah, he's black and white. Speaks, speaks to the masses, us, us average Joes. If you can talk about it, it ain't Tao. If it has a name, it's just another thing. Now doesn't have a name. Names are for ordinary things. Stop wanting stuff. It keeps you from seeing what's real. When you want stuff, all you see are things. Those two sentences mean the same thing. <laughs> Figure them out and you've got it made. So am I kind of on target, you think? It can't be explained. The Tao is everything. It's not just one thing. The whole thing is Tao. Now, I think that's what Chongsu was trying to explain here because he was being asked this question, which is, I don't know, very many stories is he actually referenced is usually someone else. But he's actually referenced here that he's being asked because he uses other characters a lot. But he right. thought it was important enough that he that that he be asked this it's the most important question yeah yeah and why didn't they ask what is now instead of where is now i would have asked what hasn't that been asked but isn't it about seeking though if yeah, i'm but, seeking I mean, if I was something where guy, I, instead of where i want to know i mean I don't know. I would have said what, but but is, isn't that the same outcome if you say what and and that and then if you say what you just go into that ordinary <laughs> religious thing where there's going to be ten thousand different answers to use a Tao thing instead of a Tao is a ten thousand things and it is nothing. Yeah. Right. So so if it's what or, or where to find it, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 but I can totally. Relate to it instead of saying where can I find that will lead you into all this kind of group of what is it then? I mean, when I first started, saying, that's the question I would ask is what I wouldn't but, have asked where. Yes, but with what couldn't you say easily that that it's it's God? That would be the same. Wouldn't wouldn't that be close? Well, the spiritual application would be love. I would think hmm. uh, that would that would be the spiritual application to this, but. I think that's how I would look at it. Uh, what is Tao? It'd be like, uh, I was thinking about it. It would be like uh, the hand 
asking where the body is. That's good. The hand didn't know it was connected to the body and it was looking around for the body and it was connected the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that. That's how I think about the like question. Like the glasses on top of my head and I don't know where they are? Is Except like they're more connected than your glasses to you, Marla. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's actually a good response. And again, you live with a big question mark, right? You can if, if you're not aware enough, I guess. <laughs> that would be how I would have approached it earlier. You know, and then he, he mentions right off, he says, there is nowhere it is not to be found. He said, where is it? It's everywhere. There's nowhere you can look that it's not there. This and is, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. And no, I, no, no. Well, I, I was, you know, it, this reminds me very much if any of you guys know the Bhagavad Gita, where the Gita, um, I'm sorry, where Arjuna mm. um, is about to, fight his family his cousins and about to kill them and he's he's at this you know uh, this breaking point he's asking um krishna god like where are you what's going on and krishna goes i'm i'm here i'm everywhere i'm in the you know i'm in the the turd basically it's you know it's like that same type of and, and also in the Torah, God is also in everything, the leaf, you know, the, all that. It's just really, it's kind of fascinating to me how these all kind of blend together, you know. And, and it's interesting how the guy that was asking was going down the wrong road. He says, none of these questions are really to the point. In other words, you don't have a clue, really, what you're even asking. Because he said that uh, it's like you're asking questions like an inspector at the market testing the weight of pigs. Like, mm -hmm. who cares? You know, you're missing the point. If he had said, what is Dow, do you think you would have missed the point then? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the Dow can't be named, Chris. You're exactly right. And when we start naming in the next page, he talks about that, or my second page, he talks about labels, that when we start labeling things, we limit them by our labels. Yeah. Does that mean that the, that the Tao is, is everything that we, can't, we don't name or can't name? I, um, I, and, take, I sense that. I take it to mean partly that, to, that. See, all these things just, I, I could answer that with another question, I think, Chris, in my mm. limited knowledge. Mm. Um, I think words are inadequate to describe. It's right. not that, mm. like we talked about last week, not knowing, or week before was not knowing. Um, it wasn't because he didn't want to tell the person that was asking where this could be found or uh, it was that it's impossible to tell with words. And I think it's the same thing with this. It's not someone's trying to keep a secret from you <laughs> and just mm -hmm. not telling you, you know, it's that it's not possible to tell it. You can only describe. It's like, describe to me what a strawberry tastes like. It's impossible for you to describe to me fully and me totally understand what a strawberry tastes like that's a simple thing from nature and this would be even more uh well actually it's a lot the same because that's part of the Tao too so I get, that's why i see it Chris. i get caught up in the infinity of the trying to think about this you know of it, you, your mind just my mind just goes spinning on and on and on and you know I, I sort of get a headache thinking about it just due to the fact that it's an infinite concept well why don't you know where i land on that is rather than trying to understand it how can i experience it how can mm -hmm. i become aware rather mm -hmm. than how can i understand mm -hmm. and for me 
that comes from me loving. Mm. It, it really comes, you know, the other thing I had wrote down was describe to someone what love is. How do you, how does love work? I just keep coming back to that. That's like describing the strawberry. You just have to do it. You do it and you'll know. You know? Feeling. Intuition. It's yes. a sense. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a feel that you feel. And that's in, same with spirituality. It's, in my experience, I feel spiritual. I don't feel religious. You know, it's, you know, mm-hmm. it's like feel something. <laughs> it's it's kind of also you cannot name the formless if it has no form you cannot put it into name and as soon as you give it a name it will take form in in some way and then that's kind of what we're doing when we are mentioning god i think people are creating this mental image of what god is and then you're putting it into form which means that it kind of gets diluted i really like the the, the parallel to to the bhagavad gita by the way Mala. i I love that reading, and, and and there are so many other similar ways. So so by saying that 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 through love, can you say well, what is love? What is love? What does love taste like? Right? Even better, what does Tao taste like? This is where you just say, "Oh, it tastes like a strawberry." Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I can say with love that I feel peace and joy. Yes, yes. I can say that, but you really need to experience it so that yeah. you know what it is for you. So I, I, I like the thing with experience, and you can only experience it through love. I think that, that what you said, that's that's it. Right? That's been my experience, Dennis. But hmm. and the labeling is a big part of this. You know, here the highest knowledge is unbounded. That which gives uh, their thusness cannot be delimited by things. So when we speak of limits, we remain confined to limited things. The limit of the unlimited is called fullness. Mm-hmm. The limitlessness of the limit is called emptiness. I thought it would be, I thought that would be the fullness, but it's the emptiness, see? The paradox, uh, paradoxical there. Thou is the source of both. Mm. And I think that for me, part of that, you know, that emptiness is form, form is emptiness, all those things. When we're sitting around talking about it, we're really, if we're not careful, we can we can really harm our understanding because I think it's all to bring us to the moment and accept everything as it is. That's the beginning point for me mm-hmm. of starting to uh, be able to, to live in something similar is I have to accept things as they are first. Mm-hmm. And if I can do that, then it starts making a little more sense. Then I can lay down my selfish agenda when things, when I believe when I can see things clearly, because until I can see them clearly, I'm always conniving and hoping they change and that they're different. And um, and that's never in the moment, never in the moment. Now, what does love do? Love always brings me to the moment, always to the moment. My fear takes me out of the moment. My fear, I won't get this, Chris. If I'm afraid, I won't understand. Then I try to figure it out. If I let that go and just, okay, I'm where I need to be right now, there's peace there. Then then is fear sort of the opposite of love? In my thinking. Mm -hmm. In my thinking. You know, it's a Christian principle that love, uh, was it love drives out fear, love. uh, You say that love and fear can't exist at the same time. Is that it? No, not really. Well, that's kind of the thinking, yeah. I, like I mean, it, though. <laughs> do I, I like Marla? I like that what Dennis just said. Love and yeah. fear can't can't exist at the same time in the brain. Well, when I realized yeah. that love brought me to the moment because I can only love people in the moment. Yeah. And then when I'm afraid, it's usually out of the moment. That made a lot of sense to me. Fear is always in the future and therefore it doesn't the exist. Yeah, yeah. Life is right here, right now. It's not two minutes from now. It's the whole right point of all of this is to life. To the yeah. moment. Uh, well, am I thinking of too much of the um, everyday experience of love that people have? Or is, are you talking about something a little 
different from that. My first experience with it, Chris, was in AA, the first page of out of uh, working with others. Page 89 says, practical experience shows that nothing will so much ensure immunity from drinking as intensive work with other alcoholics. It works when other activities fail. When I saw that, Chris, that was my first experience with love because I'm having to think about someone else other than me. Mm -hmm. And when I realized that I got peace and joy when I did think about you instead of me. Then I realized that would work in other ways. Like in business, if I had, uh, when I was in the real estate business and I had a house that wouldn't sell years ago, there was a lady I didn't like that was in business and I'd pray for her stuff to sell. Hmm. That's me doing the same thing. You know, that, that's what I'm talking that That's the kind of actions I'm talking about where mm-hmm. I have to be concerned about someone other than me. And that gave me relief. I don't know if my houses sold faster, but I didn't worry about them like I did. So does that make sense? Yes, totally. So selfless love is that what you would say, where you don't expect anything in return. Mm-hmm. And there's always a percentage. I mean, it's never... You know, it's never 100%, I don't think. Uh, it gets more pure as time goes on. But I, I was talking to someone recently about that, that, well, well, what if I have a little bit of an agenda? Just do it mm-hmm. anyway. And just see what happens. <laughs> yes. it was. It's actually funny because first time where it, it hit me that love was not what I supposed, uh, what I, my conception of it when I went to the Latuna Roundup and, and their slogan as, as Amy and Buddy at least know here that their slogan is see and share love. And, and it dawned on I was sitting there, yes. So that means it doesn't mean for you to make me feel good or for me to make you feel good. And, and not just in a sexual way, but just in that comfort. That was what I thought love was, two people making each other feel good. But it's it's that outpouring love for one another without expecting anything in return. And and even without expectations, even if you help somebody with the steps or whatever, don't expect them to be sober an hour after. after. <laughs> right? Uh. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it changed. Oh, it I thought it had something to do with sex was one thing, and another thing was people who could make me feel good so I could make them feel good in return, that mm-hmm. give and take thing. Oh. So I, I was big when that dawned on me. Thank you, Dennis. Does that make a little more sense, Chris, of what? It's muted. Oh, you're muted, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um this is something I, I think about often because I, I hear you saying it very often, particularly in the nine o'clock meetings. And um, I still ha- I still struggle with it. I still remember the first time that somebody told me, uh, "God is love. Your higher power is love." And I've, ever since that, uh, it's been it's been a struggle to understand it that way. Um, and I think it would. Um, a lot with the faith thing. I mean, there is faith in in having love too. I would expect faith that th- things will work out. It's it's the way to to gain faith. If, if like for me, you don't have a particularly Christian view of of the higher power. So I don't know. I'm sort of blathering, but um, uh, I'm still having trouble connecting. To say the Tao equals love, but that's why I'm here. <laughs> well, he's saying the Tao is all. So, sorry, yeah. uh, Marla. I was, I was just going to respond to Chris. We've been at this for what four years, trying to study this thing, and still don't know what the fuck it is. <laughs> don't worry. Yeah. Yes, that's, I like it. 
I, I think that's part of the point is not trying to define it and being in acceptance of it is what it is, depending on where you are in your journey. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got 400 books out in front of me right now. Not really, but <laughs> like, as y'all are talking, I'm like, oh, that reminded me of this. Oh, that reminded me of that. Um, there's this little pamphlet. Cause you know, I got to take it back to, to <laughs> recovery. Um, a member's idea of Alcoholics Anonymous. There's a paragraph in here that says, I'm personally convinced that the basic search of every human being from the cradle to the grave is to find at least one other human being before whom he can stand completely naked, stripped of all pretense or defense and trust that person not to hurt him because that other person has stripped himself naked too. Mm -hmm. This lifelong encounter this lifelong search can begin to end with the first AA encounter. So y'all are talking about love and other people and what that means. And, and I found buddy said that he realized that first in AA and working with others. I realized that first with working with my sponsor because she showed me through her lack of judgment um, in, in the things that I had done. She loved me anyway. Right. That was a first tangible example of what this concept of God that other people, I think, were trying to teach me as I was growing up. But I couldn't fathom that. I couldn't grasp that because it it was theirs. It wasn't mine. And then finally, I had some raw real life experience to bring to the table enough pain to get to the vulnerability, to get to the humility. Then something else I thought about this whole unknowing nameless thing right the long version of tradition 12 says and finally we have alcoholics anonymous believe that the principle of anonymity what does anonymous mean not named unknown right the principle of anonymity has an immense spiritual significance it reminds us that we are to place principles before personalities that we are actually to practice a genuine humility, this to the end that our great blessings may never spoil us, that we shall forever live in thankful contemplation, Mm -hmm. gratitude of him who presides over us all. Mm -hmm. So then for me, where this, this naming it, this limiting thing comes from the God of my understanding or the God of my misunderstanding or the Tao or the higher power, whatever. When I start trying to define that, that's when I let, li- that's when I limit the potential. That's when I it fits in a box on Sunday mornings or fix fits in a building on Sunday mornings. If that works for you, good. Doesn't really work for me because I don't want, I don't want to define my God because then I might restrict what my God can be in two hours or what my God might need to be in two weeks. Again, it comes back to what is it right here in this moment that I need? So I just don't have as much energy and time to spend on words to, to define it. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a journey, right? It's a, it's an adventure. It's a, what do we have today? Kind of thing for me, instead of what is it rigid? It's gotta be this. It's gotta be that. That was a lot. No, you know, I think in just commenting, you you know, we, we have this expectation that, you know, the next thing we're going to do is going to call, you know, going to make us so happy and it'll be finally, we're going to be so happy when this next thing happens. And it never does. <laughs> it never happens. So learning to be happy without that, the desires, is basically kind of what I'm talking about, an attachment to the desires. Or you're out of the moment when you're doing that model. Yes. Yeah, completely. This is the just for today for the 19th of September, the last part. Gradually, in a manner I cannot explain, I began to re-examine the beliefs I had thought beyond criticism. Almost imperceivably, my whole attitude toward life underwent a silent revolution. I lost many worries and gained confidence. I found myself saying and thinking things that a short time ago I would have condemned as platitudes. 
a belief in the basic spirituality of life has grown and with it belief in a supreme and guiding power for good. I think that's the transformation that happens. And that's part of what we're talking about. Um, You know, God being love, Chris, is not necessarily a Christian. Granted, it's in the Bible. They wouldn't have left it if they would really knew what it meant. They would have taken that out. Because love is an action. It's not, it's a verb. It's not a noun. So if you say God is love, you're taking him out of the sky and you're putting him into an action. So really, if you really believe God is the act of love, then it's not Christian at all. That's that's what I've concluded. So when I don't know what to do, if if God is love, I just need to have an open heart to how I can love someone. And if I do that, then my life is better. That's all I know. My life is better when I help people. <laughs> You know, I, and I'll just leave it there. I don't have to figure it out. Well, how does it work? What about this? What about that? You know, no, uh-uh. stop that, buddy. Stop it. Come on. Don't let me go down that rabbit hole <laughs> by trying to figure everything out. And I kind of think that that's kind of why that might be why that, that the answer is, is, is untold, right? That it's yeah. not there because when we try to figure it out, we're going into a rabbit hole that has, Nothing to do with the understand, not the understanding, but the experience of of true love, a true. It's God. in the experience. God. It's not in the understanding because it's under not understandable. Mm-hmm. No, exactly. So what are we doing here? For we're we're all sitting here trying to understand it. We're just wasting Tao or <laughs> wasting time. Or <laughs> maybe maybe it's just that we're learning from others' experience, Marla. I think that's really the whole point of any of this is that we that we share experience well well that and then it's conversations like this that wants me to stay close to that being within and 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 keep searching for that whatever it is right that's that's what these and then when you stop looking you'll realize you had it the whole time and didn't know it it's like the hand looking for the body i like that analogy that's good yeah. yeah, the whole world is in your head. It's all here. I have something else I want to share. This is from, I'm reading another book. Uh, I finished one. So this is from uh, Chow Lun. This is the treatise of Sing Chow, who was a the fellow that wrote the, the history of Chinese philosophy that I was reading said that there were three books he read that helped him understand Zen. And this was one of the three in the Tao Te Ching and one other, one other book. But this one, this is a really interesting quote. And it talks, this is about, we're always talking about Wu Wei and effortless effort. And he said, uh, talking about non-moving does not mean that motion must cease in order to produce rest but that there is rest with motion going on, that they're together. There's rest with motion. Therefore, things move. They're forever at rest. Motion need not cease in order to produce rest. Therefore, things are at rest. They do not have to cease moving. So we think that for us to be in this e place of ease, that that means we have to stop. No, it's an inward ease. It's an inward rest. Mm. Part of the story was, which it is for all of these, when he is describing the Tao, he says, simplicity, stillness, indifference, indifference, purity, harmony, ease, All these names leave me indifferent for their distinctions have disappeared. He's let go of his opinions. He's let go of his labels. That's the best words he could use. But even them, even they have melted away. Mm -hmm. The only time I've had harmony and ease is when 
I've been on the positive helping side, not the negative hurting side. <laughs> no harmony and ease over there, you know. Nor have I ever had harmony and ease when I've tried to change things and control things. Oh my God, where were you half an hour ago with my spray gun stuff working? That was it. Well, I, I, I came to the point and then it was kind of funny because I've been waiting for a week to spray paint my furniture now because of the rain. Then I get started, I set everything up and I polish it all and all that. And then I started and two and a half furniture in, it just stopped spraying. <laughs> and I'm trying to work on it for an hour and a half and I get frustrated, but it's the acknowledgement that, okay, I'm just irritated with that, with, with this. And then I just see my thoughts. Okay. That's what it is. Let me put it aside for a little bit and let's see, but it's interesting. Right. And then at that moment, I'm trying to control, I want this to work right now. And then it, it's, it's, it really gets worse. Right. So it's interesting. Do you consciously yeah. use the serenity prayer when you're when in a situation like that? Not that, not normally that, but but you can kind of say that, that the serenity is in the acceptance that I can accept that I'm irritated. Mm. And, and that's actually a big thing that, I, okay, it just irritates me that I can't do this. So I, that, that kind of can put me a little halt. And, uh, but my next thing is just not to go to a meeting and find somebody I can help out at four o'clock, which might be a good idea, call somebody up. So I, I need to try that out. Um, and, and well, well, you did come to a meeting shortly thereafter. You're here right now. That's true. And I almost forgot about this because I went to my normal behavior. I went to my crack dealer, which is the Dollar Tree, and I got $5 worth of candy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. And I, I'm totally well aware that now I'm just substituting alcohol for sugar. That's totally what I'm doing. Uh, thinking that that's going to make me feel good. And that was what Marley is saying in the future. Yeah, wait a minute, just wait a minute. Wait. As soon as I'm beginning chowing down, this licorice is going to make me feel good for like three or four seconds. <laughs> that's it. I don't regret it. So it's interesting. For the, the, here, here I go. Similar thing happened to me too. I was late because I was working in the shop um, on a project and you know, one little roadblock after another would come along, you know, and I was late. It took me longer than I expected. So I almost missed this meeting. But I wind up using the serenity prayer. I just try and uh, tell myself, what am, what am I not? What can I do about the situation? Something's broken. What can I, what's the best thing to do? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a great awareness, Chris, that you're able to start looking at it that way instead of just getting pissed off. And All right, that's usually the first thing, though. But <laughs> I do too, but it doesn't last as long as it used no. to. You no, know? yeah. no, it doesn't last as long as it used to. I'm really, actually, have noticed that so much this past these past few months that my my resentments, my angers do not last nearly as long as they used to. Mm -hmm. Boy, I, I have gratitude for that. I really do. Right. Yeah, it's really important to respond to a resentment and get rid of the fear, I believe. And usually how do you do a, that? How usually do you it's, that? well, it's the, um, first thing is to recognize the resentment as such and then and then um why am i being resentful what kind of thing happened i've only recently learned that i most of my life i live by fear so i just start looking there and learn to face the fear or you know do something at least to, to um help resolve the resentment you know try are you do you look for a way to get love into the if you Maybe, if, Oh, quite often that's the case. Yeah, quite often the resentment is with another person not doing something. Um, and uh, so um, I, I, I really look at what, what my part in it was. And if I have a part in it, then, then I, I fix that part as soon as yeah. I can. Yeah. And then, and then I go to the next, another step um, 
beyond, you know, I get into the empathy because empathy is, is part of it. You know, this person not didn't do something. Well, they got stuff going on too. So as a way of helping, you go on and, and carry on with helping resolve their situation too. Yeah. That's a form of love. Mm. Empathy, yeah. I mean, you're you're one, you're helping them. You know, yep. you're thinking of someone other than yourself. Right. And you know, you can think about love too. Is the way of nature, the way of consideration, you know, the way is a way of love, like water, for example. Water doesn't distinguish between who it helps as far as nourishing a body. The same water will nourish the most evil person in the world. The same as, you know, if you put Hitler and, and Mother Teresa in a, you know, side by side and gave them both water, water would do the same thing for both of them. You know, that kind of idea that right. it's not discriminatory doesn't make differences like this is talking about that you remove your limits. And a lot of nature behaves the same way. Yeah, nature doesn't care no. what you look like. No. Yeah, wild animals show a lot of amazing love. It's just uh, We can take a lot of example from them. <laughs> and they're in the moment, too. They're not, in, they're not uh, for the most part, uh, I think that's the whole point of all of this is teaching us how to get back to the moment, which is our normal, natural state. And we live out of the moment all the time. Yeah. Meditation, all this practice gets me in the moment. It, it is so funny that love doesn't discriminate. And, and that in, in this and the, the water analogy is so good, but it's so hard with people. I have this friend of mine, he he sends out a lot of these texts that we're getting in, in recovery and sends it out to a lot of people. Now, one decided to respond just directly political to these things here, just strictly off the bat, just isolated with their own personal news in the room for for month, don't see a lot of people. And then they just responded politically. And he got upset about this. And, and he, he, he told me, there's just some people that you cannot be nice to. And I just said that's interesting, and I and I haven't got to talk to him to him about it, but 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 in reality, you can still be nice, and you can still do these things, and not feel that personally a personal attack because it's probably because that person had a different political point of view, and that's all it really is, and that doesn't mean that we need to be further away from each other <laughs> or anything. But I just thought it was it was funny, right? Mm -hmm. So. And, and we're, it's we're all in a place in this journey, aren't we? We're all in a different spot and different things. We react differently and we think, why is he acting? That, why is he reacting that way? You know, but we all do it. And yes, but why is it, we, why is it get so hard? So judgmental? You know, animals are not judgmental. Nature's not judgmental. Why are humans judgmental? Well, we, we're being judgmental so we can separate ourselves from others. So we can just put ourselves in that hierarchy, even I'm better than or I'm worse than. But yeah, why are we I'm doing sure. it? Maybe because we have that that extra sense of mind that isn't in, in this moment. All animals, they're here now. It's fight and flight, no matter what they do, right? But we have that we have that uh the more complex fears, don't we? Yes, and then I don't know why. So so that's my question. Why is it so hard to love another human being? Um compared to loving a dog, for example, or a plant or or something else, it's so easy to love dogs or animals and that. But when it comes to other human beings, even the ones that's close to you. Some dogs. Animals don't talk back. <laughs> no, but I talk back for my dog just to make it interesting when I argue with him. Otherwise, I would just be a lunatic, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we've got this complex thinking brain that that takes us out of the moment and we're full of ourself and we just don't understand this way. And that's why we're even here talking about this is because, you know, this guy wanted to know where it was. What am I missing and where is it? And he couldn't see it's all around and here. And, and how do I get there? You know, what do I, you know, and it's more of a dimensional 
wear than it is a physical wear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. So, and I, it's the same answer I always have. I don't understand how it works. I don't know anything about God. All I know is when I'm nice to you, my day goes better. So I'm going to keep being nice to you. So my day goes better. And when it goes bad and I've screwed it up, I need to look at how I made it about me instead of about you. There's not much to look at because instantly when that anger comes up, that's because you're making it about yourself instead of yeah. others. That yeah. is instantly. Really? And and it's so funny how we can rationalize all that justified anger and all that. But if I get angry, it's simply because something don't go my way. As there's no arguments about it. It's just something always fear. right or wrong always doesn't really matter. Always behind it, you know? <laughs> always, 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 I'm afraid of losing something or not getting something. Hmm. Always. Yep. I've never been disturbed that I couldn't track it back to fear in some form. And the fears never come to realization. Mm. Very rarely. Well, I think, we, I'm get there, to I think that. we can get there. Yeah. With some work. It takes work, but I think we can, uh, I think they can diminish with time. The more we learn to walk in love and learn to walk in the moment, you know, I just love the Mark Twain quote. I, I guess it's attributed to him anyway. He says, uh, I'm an old man and experienced a great many problems. Most of them never exist. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that, I think that he was one of us, wasn't he? Wasn't he one of us? That's I what think I, so. What was he? I think so. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. Thank you. Thank well, you. we are the smartest most intelligent group of people. Well, we're, we really are seeking a spiritual way of life. That's why they call alcohol spirits. We're looking for relief, you know, mm. medicine, medicine. Yeah. Any other comments? No, we just <laughs> know the Tao is not in the bottle of alcohol. No. It's not in the bottle of J Jack Daniels. Can't find the Tao there. Well, you, I guess you can, if it's everywhere, you can find it there too. It will just, well, we found was, it will definitely be the higher power. We <laughs> talked about that. But Didn't we that, find it there? Yeah, I, I totally true. found it there. Like I said, with my latest relapse, I mean, there was, that got me lying there sleeping in my driveway, right? So it was definitely a higher power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but does the Donald actually exist then? I didn't hear that. Does the Tao Does actually the Tao exist? Mm -hmm. Does it exist? Maybe. Maybe not. I, I think it's the, to the totality of all creation. Is If you wanted to put a, the whole thing. Now, us understanding it's a whole nother. That's like I, saying I a, strawberry that. is big, a strawberry is red and about this size. You know, that's about the extent of the description I gave, you know. Mm hmm could you could you use the same answer like when when Buddha the first Buddha got asked so uh, what isn't is it to be awakening or what does awaken means and all he says is that it's the end of suffering so he doesn't really give a direct answer he just says what it's not and and that's yeah me seeking spirituality through the bottle or through um, addiction or, or or pleasure if you could say that that's that's probably what it's not but i don't know if you could do the same okay this is a quote from dropping ashes on the buddha teaching of uh shuang san talking about the response when all the zen masters were asked the same question dennis there are no words for it so if you open your mouth you're wrong this is why whenever Zen masters were asked the question, one only shouted, another would hit the person questioning. <laughs> we, are we talking about what was the question? The question was, um, where, is, um, where is enlightenment? How can I find this? What, where is the Tao? In other yes, words. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, another one would hold up one finger. Another one would say, uh, 
And he said, if you understand the meaning behind this, one would do nothing, just sit there. If you know the meaning behind these actions, uh, that is the only clear mind. The different actions are just different styles of pointing to the clear mind. They, he calls it the clear mind. Mm -hmm. It is impossible to explain clear mind in words. So the Zen masters use shouting and hitting and holding up one finger to explain. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. I agree. We want someone to give us the answer so we can work the formulas, what it is. Mm. Like it doesn't work that way. Yeah. I'm like a pill to make me feel better. Yes. Mm. And I want it now. You mean I've got to help you instead of think about me? I've got to do something self-sacrificing? I don't want to do that. Mm. See, we're missing it by the the selfishness and the dishonesty and the resentment and the fear keeps us trapped. So just like what we just read here, that there's no answer to it. It's just like it is everything or it is nothing. And I, and I like that. So that means from now on, you can start beating up your sponsor with, or your sponsee with a shoe if they have direct answers about what is a higher power. Oh, really? I think what happens... I think what happens, Dennis, is the result of this spiritual way of life, we start being aware that it's this way. We start being aware of this whole thing instead of just going through life so uh, blind and, you know, unaware. Because that's what the program is doing for me is making me aware. I, I didn't realize before that my life was better if I cared about you and that I didn't have to carry all these burdens that I used to carry, that I could be at ease in life. Didn't know that. I just thought I was a mean, miserable person, had sin in my life, and that's why everything went bad for me. What a difference. I don't need enlightenment. I'm happy with what I have. Thank you. You know, I don't need anything more. Is that enlightenment? Could be, Amy. Could be. Could be. See, that's the whole point of Zen, too, is you stop looking for it. You know, you just sit. You just excel. It's about, yeah, emptiness is emptiness and form is form. It just is what it is. And it's all as it should be. And that's where the peace is at. I agree. But thank God that I'm still human because I still step out of that. And, and the way I can see that I go but back into the, human, no the unconsciousness is, is when I when I detect the anger. That's when, oh, here I go off again. And then but aren't we, you getting some great tools to use for that stuff oh my that you've never had before? Yeah. What, yeah. what a difference, you know? Hmm. Does that, that make actually, any sense, Chris? I'm yes, still sir. I'm still thinking about your question, you know. Um does all of that make sense to you? Uh, the question about does the Tao exist? The Tao and uh, your, I would encourage you to just be open to uh, to maybe love in your life, hmm. the opportunities that show themselves that you may not, you, you may be walking past and just see if opportunities don't arise that, um, will bring more peace and joy in your life mm. and give us a report because I think you're going to start seeing more of those. And that's really where this is at is being open to those things mm -hmm. because they're around us all the time. We just don't see it. Yeah. I, I think you, I would say that in the, in the conditioned mind and in the mind of an intellect that we all have, it, it doesn't exist there. It's not an intellect thing. So you, mm -hmm. you cannot grasp it with understanding. You just have to be open. Mm. And then you experience mm. it. See, that's what God is love. God, that's an action. That's an experience. It's that's not that. in a book. Oh, hi, yeah. baby. My sponsor tells me that that's what a prayer is, is just being open. Yeah. It's surrender, Chris. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Life is an endless sequence of series of surrenders. 
or a see or, or or an endless sequence of fighting, one or the other. <laughs> one or the other. Pick anyone. Yeah. Sometimes a good fight is good. I'm actually looking forward to a good sarcastic fight with my wife once in a while. <laughs> but we don't mean it deep, so it, it it's not anything bad anymore like it used to be. <laughs> good. Good, good. Yeah. Anything else, guys, before we close? No, fun meeting. Good conversation today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. I appreciate Thank it. You. Well, you guys have a great week, and we will see you next week. Hello, this is Buddy C. I wanted to make you aware of several recovery-related resources that I've posted in the episode description. These resources include a list of recovery podcasts, a free sober meditation app, daily recovery email, shared Google recovery calendars. Hope you put some of these resources to use and have a great week. Thank you for listening to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends in recovery.